Hi guys. Namaste. I'm Pragati. I hope you are able to see me and hear me clearly. We'll wait for some time before everyone else joins in and then we'll start. Hi guys. I'm so excited to be here today to be taking this session. Hi Mahesh. Yes, so we are waiting for some more people to join in and then we'll start. Awesome. So many people in on Facebook already. We are still waiting for people to join in on Instagram. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hello everyone. I'm so glad and so excited to be here taking this session. I'm good, Amir. How are you? Hi, Anamika. Hi, Mamta. Thank you so much, Abhishek. This is all my work. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that you noticed. Uh, I think it depends on the government's instructions, I would say. What's the plan today? So today, since this is, um, we are doing this session together for the first time, we'll be focusing on the whole body and we'll be working on proper alignment and postures. Let's see how that goes. So we'll be working on postures and alignments. Hello, hello, hi. Hi guys. So I think we are good to go now and we'll start. So we, we'll be first starting. So yes, I'm on Facebook and Instagram both. So I would love for you all to join with me for the session and we'll have fun. Okay. So this is my hat. I hope I'm visible to all of you. Yes. Okay. So cross your legs. Sit on top of your sit bones. Lift your spine up. Lift the sides of the body up. Roll your shoulders back and down. Hands in Gyan Mudra. Is it blurred? Is the video blurred for you all? Uh, because some of, someone just said that the video is blurred. I'm not sure if it's blurred. Okay, because I get the video clear. Okay, so you get the video clear. So it's uh, let's just uh, start off from here. Okay. So we cross our legs at the center of our shin bone. We sit on top of our sit bones. We lift the spine up. We lift the sides of the body up. We roll the shoulders back and down. Hands in Gyan Mudra. Chin parallel to the floor. Eyes closed. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Nice long deep breath in and out. With every breath, keep lengthening your spine up towards the sky, focusing all your attention on your breath. Keep breathing nice long and deep. And starting with next exhalation, we'll chant Om thrice. Inhale. Ah Gently bring your palms together, rub your palms, place over your eyes, slightly massage your face and slowly open your eyes. Namaste guys, my name is Pragati and I'm a yoga instructor. So I've been doing classes for Time Fitness in past pre-corona times and here I am to connect with you all in corona times and we hope to continue this connection post-corona times as well. Okay, with that said, if you have any questions, I would love to take it after the session. So, yes, video is clear. Okay, thank you so much. So, I would love to take the uh, questions after the session. Now, let's focus on the session. Yes. 
I think I have to adjust this one. Yes, now you'll be able to see me and Instagram sees me clearly. Okay. So the first thing that we will be doing is we'll be warming the spine up. Hum spine warm up karenge and that will in turn help us stimulate the nervous system, activate the nervous system for all the sessions, for all the postures that we are going to do during the session. Okay. So come on all fours. Your wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips, feet flat on the floor. From here, inhale, lift your chin and chest up towards the sky. Lift your tailbone up towards the sky. Open the chest. So you open the front of the body right from the pelvis. You feel the stretch running through your throat. And from here, exhale, curve your spine, chin to your chest. The crown of your head points down towards the floor. You're pulling the abdomen into your spine. You're pushing the chest into the shoulders and you're curving whole of the posterior body. Inhale and forward. Lift your chest up towards the sky. Lift your tailbone up towards the sky. And exhale and curve in. Keep breathing guys. Your breath is super, super, super important. Please sync your movement with your breath. Inhale and open the chest. Lift the chest up. So when you are opening the chest, try not to keep the shoulders here. We always pull the shoulders back and lift the chest up. And exhale and curve in. We go for this one last time. This is cat pose and cow pose. Inhale and forward. Also called Marjari Asana and Vital Asana. Exhale and curve in. And relax. So this was the first posture that we did today. So this is called a panacea, a ram barn for your uh, back pain. So if you have back pain, hota hai, to you can always do that. Back is stiffness. Hoti hai. If you have stiffness after your workout, running, you can always practice this one. Now let's get to the next posture. We are warming up slowly and we slowly and gently move forward. If you have any questions, I would love to take the questions after the session. Okay. So we come on all fours again and this time you tuck your toes under. Lift your sit bones up towards the sky. Keep lifting your sit bones up towards the sky. Lengthen your spine. Push your chest towards your toes and keep looking towards your toes. This is called a downward facing dog or Adho Mukha Shwanasan. So I'm transferring my weight from my hands towards my legs and I'm looking towards my toes. My feet are parallel to each other and hip distance apart. I'm lengthening the back of my legs. I'm lifting my sit bones up nicely. I'm engaging my core and pushing my abdomen towards my thighs. We'll stay here. For 10, 9, 8, keep breathing, your breath is your key, 7, never forget that, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and slowly and gently sit. Yes, you felt that? You must have felt it in your hamstrings, in your back, a little bit in the shoulders, in the glutes also, yes? Okay, let's move forward. So we will use our downward facing dog as an entry to a lot of different poses today. So you will come into a downward facing dog. Yes? And from here, you take your right leg and you step it forward in between your palms. You extend the left leg back and you gently place your left knee on the floor. And flatten your left toes. And you work the pelvis forward. This is Anjaneyasan. We just go a little bit. We are not forcing too much. We are just going with the flow a little bit. See, right now my knee is overshooting the ankle. So what I do is I step the foot slightly forward so that my knee comes directly on top of the ankle. Keep working the pelvis forward. And here, if you are comfortable, you take your hands on top of the knee and push your chest back. Breathe. Stay here. You feel... A nice stretch in the left quadricep. Enjoy. You stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. We again go back to our first pose. That is downward facing dog. You put your hands on the floor, tuck your back toes under, and go into a downward facing dog. And from here, inhale and step your left foot forward this time. Gently place your right knee down, flatten your right toes and again you work your pelvis forward. 
The pelvis doesn't stay here on top of the back knee. You always move it, move it forward. Now, if you feel any stress in the knee, you can always put a cushion or something under the knee. Okay? So, if I have a cushion here, I have this cushion here, I'll put it under the knee and then I'll stretch. Yes? So, please uh, don't uh, force yourself into a posture. Go as much as your body allows. And please don't shy away from using props. These are your friends. Keep working the pelvis forward and keep opening the chest. We stay here for five, four, three, keep breathing, two, and one. Slowly come back, put your palms on the floor. We're going to a downward facing dog. And now we we'll relax in child's pose. So relax in child's pose. Stay here for five long and deep breaths. Stay in child's pose for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly come back up. Okay. Let's move forward. Yes. So now we start with our standing postures. So you can come and stand on top of your mat with your feet hip distance apart. So hip distance doesn't meet here. Hip distance is the structural hip that you have. So you put your feet hip distance apart and parallel to each other. Yes. From here, you press all four corners of your feet into the mat and lift all the muscles in your legs up. You engage your core and you keep lifting the chest up, lift the sides of the body up. And inhale, take your arms up towards the sky. Lengthen your spine. So see, as I'm lifting my hands up, I'm lifting my core, I'm lifting the sides of the body, I'm lifting the body up really, really nicely. And from here, I lean forward, I lean forward, lean forward. See, I'm not curving the back to go forward. I'm pushing the chest. I'm leaning forward. I'm putting the weight forward and forward and forward as much as you can go. As much as you can go and take your palms to the floor. Now, if you're not able to reach the floor, you can touch your fingers. If this is inaccessible and you have blocks or cushions with you, you can put that in front and then you can reach that. If you think that you need more height, more height. If you need more height, more height. But don't arch your back. This is what we don't want to do. You want to push the chest out and forward. And then go to... Wherever we can. Yes, if you are able to reach your palms to the floor, you walk your hands in closer to your legs. And we stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly inhale again, lengthen your spine. Come back up, inhale, exhale, and release. Are we good? This was Padahast Asan. This is a hamstring stretch, a really good stretch for opening all the muscles in the back of your body. Yes, helps improve the immunity and that is the talk of the town these days. Forward folds also help you connect closer to your cells. They bring you closer to yourself, strengthen the willpower, strengthen your inner energy and very good for the digestive system. Yes. And if you're looking to lose that fat, I've got some question here. This is your friend. Okay, so now, going forward in the standing postures, we'll get into Trikonasana. Trikonasana is a triangle posture, so we'll be doing two variations of this. Trikonasana and uh, revolve Trikonasana. Okay, Sorry. so this time you keep your feet three and a half to four feet of distance apart. I'll start on the right, you turn the right out, yes, and turn the left in slightly. Now the pelvis, it still faces forward. I'm not turning my pelvis towards the right. My pelvis still faces forward. I will inhale, take my arms up, parallel to the floor. And exhaling, I'll shoot the body forward, cutting through the right hip. And I will go all the way down. Now see, I'm not going down like this. I'm still opening the chest up towards the sky and then I reach the floor. If you're not able to reach the floor, you have your friends with you. So my friends are these blocks. Your friend can be a cushion. Your can, friend can be a pile of books. Anything that you have. And keep it here. I take help from my friend. And I exhale and go and put my hand on the block. And extend the other hand up. 
make sure that your shoulder comes on top of the other shoulder and you are opening the chest at all times and look up towards the left hand yes keep breathing and try not to drop the neck you keep lifting the neck up if you feel that this is a lesser height for you you can always adjust the height of the block see i told you this is your best friend and stay here for 5 4 3 2 and 1 slowly inhale come up i'll take my best friend with me to the left side and i'll turn the left foot out and the right foot in and i still keep opening the pelvis forward i keep opening the chest forward and now i keep my friend here again we'll start with i'll inhale take my arms up parallel to the floor exhale again i'll lengthen the side of the body i'll cut from the left hip and i'll try to go down as much as i can with an open chest if you want to adjust the setting of the block you can keep it here and go make sure that your top shoulder comes on top of the bottom shoulder and you extend your hands up keep opening the chest up towards the sky keep looking up towards your right hand and we stay here yes 10 9 8 you want to turn off turn off the comments 8 i'm not sure if that's okay Seven, six. I'll try that. Five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly inhale, come up, and exhale and release. Let me try turning off the comments. Yes. So I have turn off commenting from for Instagram. I have no idea if I can turn it off for Facebook. Or, okay. Let's go forward. Yes. So as I promised, and I never break my promises. I promised two trikonasanas, right? So we did one extended trikonasan. We have one more revolved trikonasan. Yes. Let's do this. So again, if you need your friend, Mr. Block, you will use your friend, Mr. Block. So you will turn your right foot out and your left foot in, and I'll place Mr. Block on the outside of my right foot. Now this one is a closed pelvis asan. The first one that we did uttar trikonasan was an open pelvis posture. This one is a closed pelvis posture. So you close the pelvis. You keep your right hand at your waist. You inhale, take your left hand up towards the sky, engage the core and lift the chest up towards the sky. From here exhale, lengthen your spine forward and forward get into a flat back. Again, look, I'm not hunching the back. I'm always and always focusing on lengthening the spine forward, and then I take my uh, left hand, I put it on top of the block, and I slowly open the chest up. If you're comfortable here, you can take the other hand up. If not, please stay here. Please respect the limits of your body and only go as much as you can. Keep opening the chest. Get your top shoulder on top of the bottom shoulder and stay here. If you need. A lower setting of the block. Block. You're always welcome. Go for as low as you can. Stay here for five, four, three. Keep looking up towards the block hand. Three, two, and one. And without ditching your friend, bring your friend along with you, and we turn on to the other side. Stand. So I keep Mr. Block on the outside of my left foot. I'm again closing the pelvis. I'm turning my right foot in. I close the pelvis. I close the chest. I keep my left hand at my waist because this is the revolved pose again. Yes. So I have to take the opposite hand up. And I inhale. Take my right hand up towards the sky. I engage my core. I lift my chest up towards the sky. And from here, I lengthen, 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 lengthen. Again, no hunching. Only lengthening. and I lengthen the spine forward i take my hand and place it on top of the block again this to block yes and slowly i will open the chest up towards the sky now if i feel comfortable i'll slowly take this hand up if not i'll keep this hand on top of the waist if you feel that you need to remove the block you can remove the block place the hand on the floor and get here in the posture breathe keep the back knee straight make sure that you are pressing the back edge of the foot into the mat you are not lifting it up or not bending it that way you might injure the knee yes and you twist and stay here for 5 4 3 
two, one, and slowly come up. Yes? Are we good? Did you feel that stretch? Yes, I'm sure you did. Yes? Now let's move forward. Okay. So I'll keep Mr. Block back. And we'll be doing a balancing posture. For that, we won't need Mr. Block, but you can need, you might need Mr. Wall if you struggle with balance slightly. So this posture is called Vrikshasan and you must, must have done it uh, in the past, maybe in your yoga classes with other instructors. This is a very, very nice posture, a very basic posture to improve your balance and concentration and also strength in the legs and the core. So you take your right leg up, you bend the knee, you place the sole of the right foot on the inside of the left thigh. Now, I can reach the groin, so I reach the groin. If you cannot reach here, please don't place the leg here. No, no, total no, no. What you do is, you either place it down here, or you can cross it. Or you can come all the way up, but not on the knee. The knee already takes a lot of pressure during the day. Why to pressurize it more? Yes? So we are here. Now sometimes what happens is when you put the leg here, you can all come here. Don't uh, sit there waiting. Okay? So when you put the leg here, try not to push this hip out. No? No? You, you engage the glutes and you push it in. You engage the core. You lengthen the sides of the body and you bring your hands to your heart center. Yes? And breathe here. And once comfortable, slowly inhale. Take your arms up towards the sky and balance. So find a point of concentration and keep looking at that point. That point should be at your eye level. Breathe. No forcing yourself. Keep opening the pelvis. So if I show it to you from the side, this is how the posture looks from the side, not here. I'm continuously opening the hip towards the side so that my both legs come in one straight line. And if you look at me from the side, you see only one straight line, not my knee protruding out. Stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly and gently, first bring your hands down and slowly release the leg and release the hands. Yes. Ready to do it on the other side. Let's go. So let's take the left leg up. You take your left leg up, bend the knee and the same rules apply that you place the foot on the inside of the right thigh. Yes. See? See no hands. Yes. Okay. What you do is you press all the corners of your right foot into the mat. You engage all the muscles of the right leg and you pull it up. You keep opening the Left knee to the side. Again, we are not pushing into the hip. We are keeping the weight centered. We are engaging the core. We are lifting the spine up. And get your hands to your heart center. Once comfortable, inhale. Take your arms up towards the sky. And focus your gaze at one singular point. So the gaze should be focused at one point that is at your eye level. Yes? Let's do this. So we were at the left leg. Oh my God. See, you move your focus and you fall. Okay, breathe here for five. Keep lifting your spine up. Four, three, two, and one. Slowly and gently first bring your hands down and slowly release the leg and release the hand. Are you good? Are you chilling? Okay, stay you guys. Ask for it. Let's move forward. The next posture that we are going to do is Utkatasan. This is very similar to uh, squats that you might have done. So, yes, squats ke bohat similar hota hai. And let's do this. For this one, what you do is, I'll show it to you from both the angles, front and side. Yes. So, you put your feet hip distance apart. You bend your knees. You take your hands to the side. And inhale, take your hands up. Yes. Keep engaging the core. Now, this is very similar to the squat in the sense that we are not sitting forward. We are again sitting back as we sit in a squat. So, I, I will bend my knees. I will take the hip back and I will come here. I look up towards my fingers and I stay here. Now, 
If your uh, lower back is hyperextending, what you do is you engage the core and you push it to the lower back and hold. Keep pressing all four corners of your feet into the mat. Yes, keep engaging the leg muscles nicely. Keep looking up towards the fingers and we stay here for only five breaths. Five, if you have issues in the knees, please do not try this. Four. Yes, I know. Three. Two, I know it's difficult to hold. One, and slowly exhale and fold forward. Lengthen the back of your legs. Rest, relax, breathe. Stay here for five. Four, three, having fun, two, and one. Bend your knees and sit into Malasana. So we'll take a lot of time here in Malasana. So your feet are a distance apart and you come up. Now if this is inaccessible, what you can do is take your legs a little wide, put your hands down, lift yourself up and come here. Your feet point forward here. But not here. If you feel that pointing forward is not working for you, you can take your feet slightly out. A elevation of 5 to 10 to 15 degrees is completely fine. See, I'm so benevolent. Yes. So you just take this slightly out and get your hands to your heart center and push your chest out and forward. Now, if I show it to you from the side, this is how it looks. So I sit here. And I push the chest out and forward. That will help you straighten the spine. So if you are here, you will have to lift. Really, really lift the chest up and roll the shoulders back away from the ears and stay here. We we'll stay here for good, good, how many counts? You say 10 counts? No, 30 counts. One, two. You can close your eyes and stay here and breathe nice, long and deep. Keep breathing. Yes, we've done 10 counts, only 20 more to go. Keep pushing the pelvis down towards the floor. Keep lifting the chest up towards the sky. Keep rolling the shoulders back. Keep engaging the core to get the spine a little more straight. Only five counts, yes, promise. Five, four, three, two, and one. And now you know what to do. Slowly and subtly, sit back into what it like. See how we've progressed from standing postures and now we've come to a sitting posture. Butterfly. Bring the soles of your feet together and pull your feet in. And enjoy the stretch in the inner thighs. I love this one. And I include it in all, almost all my classes. Yes. My favorite. Yes, you can talk here right now. Keep moving the legs up and down. Breathe and enjoy the stretch. Keep breathing. Keep moving the legs up and down. You can even close your eyes here and breathe through your nose. Breathe nice, long and deep through your nose. Keep breathing. Having fun in the groin, in the inner thighs. Yes, in the doctors. Yes, I'm also feeling it. Have fun. We are all having fun together. Okay. Inhale, take your arms up. Lengthen your spine up. Lift your chest up towards the sky. And exhale and lean forward. And forward. And forward. And forward. So again, I'm leaning forward. I'm not hunching the back and going down. So my aim is not to reach the floor. I'm not trying to reach the floor. I'm only trying to open the pelvis a little more and push the chest a little more. So I'm just trying to move forward. I'm not trying to go down here. So I try and move forward and forward and forward as much as I can go. And I stay here. Keep breathing. So even if you can go till here, I'm completely fine with that. But if you go till here like this, no. So what do you do? You lift the chest up. You tilt the pelvis, you turn the pelvis and you go forward. Only 10 more counts. Promise. 10, nine, 
एट थोड़ा सा और आगे चले सेवन अलटी मोर फाइव अलटी मोर थ्री टू एंड वन इन हेल कम बैक आप एक्सहेल रिलीज ब्रिंग योर नीज टूगेदर हक योर नीज एंड रॉक फॉर्ट इन बैक दिस इज योर ब्रीदर यू गॉट योर ब्रीदर एंड ब्रीथ नाइस लॉन्ग इन डी And from here, we we'll relax in child's pose. Yes, yes. See, I give you child's pose also to relax. And breathe here. Relax. Stay here for ten, nine. When you sit in child's pose, make sure that your toes touch. And if you have any issues in the knees, then you are not advised to do child's pose. Or if you have to do it. You take a cushion, then say your friends always, and you put the cushion here, and then you go into child's pose. Or you can, if you feel any pressure in the knee while sitting, you put something under the knees, and that way you will release uh, some pressure from the knees to go into a child's pose. And five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Are you good? Yes. Again, shall we? So what we'll do is we'll get into simple forward folds and then we'll complement the forward folds with some back bends. Yes. So since we are working on the whole body slowly, 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 so we worked on opening up of the hamstrings. Yes. We worked on anjaneyas and we opened the quadriceps. Then we worked on some balancing postures. that then we came back we got into strengthening of the legs that is uttkatasan then we worked on flexibility that's again we worked into forward fold then mobility then we got into malasan and slowly and gently butterfly mobility of the hips and now we've come here this would be a forward fold and this is what we'll start with let's get there okay i see that no comments on instagram it's locked i think it's also locked now So you sit up nice and tall. Again, engage your core. Not sitting here. If you feel that your back isn't allowing you to sit up nice and tall, if the core uh, isn't getting engaged as much to sit nice and tall, <laughs> either a cushion or a block. And let me show how to sit on top of it. And here I sit. See now my spine is even more straight. Yes, magic. These props have magic. So use whichever prop you want. Yes. So by flex feet, I mean dorsiflexion of your feet. You keep pulling your toes towards yourself. Now inhale, take your arms up, lengthen your spine up towards the sky, engage the core, lift your chest up towards the sky, and exhale and lean forward. Now again, leaning forward doesn't mean hunching and going forward. No. The aim again is not reaching your toes. The aim again. is to work with your body and see what's working with your body now if you're not able to reach the toes i have i have so many friends i have another friend of mine called a strap if you don't have a strap you can use a dupatta or a towel anything anything that you have with you and you take it forward and put it around the mount of your feet you hold the strap you bend your elbows and push your chest out keep moving the shoulders back and keep pushing the chest down yes let's stay here We will stay here for five. Keep breathing. Four again. No hunching of the spine. Keep pushing the chest out and forward. Even if you are here, stay here. Just straight spine. Yes. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Inhale. Take your arms up. Exhale and down. This was Paschimottanasan. Pascham means west. And in yogic language, pascha means the back of the body. So uttan means a stretch. So we are stretching the back of the body. That is why the posture is pascha mudanasan. And you keep this tip whenever we meet next. I'll have a test and I'll see if you remember what pascha mudanasan means. Now we'll get into jhana shirasan. You take your right leg, you bend it, and you place the foot on the inner side of the left thigh. This is very similar to what we did in vrikshasan. Yes, but इसपे कोई प्रेशर नहीं डालना है. So if your leg cannot come here, you can keep it here. That's totally fine. Again, make sure that you are not keeping the leg 
uh, you are not turning the pelvis in the direction of the leg. Your, pel your pelvis stays forward nicely. Yes? Okay. Keep pulling the leg closer to the groin, as close as you can get. Foot is pointing up towards the sky and toes are pulled towards you. Inhale, take your arms up, lengthen the spine up again. Now with a slight twist in the spine, a slight micro twist in the spine, you will exhale, lengthen your spine and go forward. Yes? Smile. Go forward. If you are not able to reach for your toes, you can just catch hold of your foot and go. If you are not able to reach here, then my friend, you have your friend. You catch hold of it. Catch hold of your strap or your dupatta and you bend your elbows and push your chest out and forward. We will stay here. Even if you can go till here, again the same principles apply. That you keep pushing the chest out and forward and you're not hunching the spine. Stay here for five, four, three, two and one. Slowly inhale, bring your hands up. Exhale, please. And the posture's name is head to knee pose. Janu is the knee and Shirsh is the head. Asana is posture. And please don't force yourself. This is the rule of the class. Now we change the legs. My right is forward. Left is in. Sit up nice and tall on both the sit bones. If you have to move the muscles slightly out, you move the muscles slightly out. Inhale, take your arms up. Lengthen your spine up. Again, engage the core and lift the chest up towards the sky. And exhale, exhale, exhale. Go for as much as you can. Keep going forward. As much as you can. Now, again, if you cannot reach for the foot, you have your strap. You put the strap on the mount of the foot. See, I'm putting the strap here. Not here. Not here. But I'm putting it here. Why do we put it here? This gives you a little more muscular stretch. This will give you a more skeletal stretch. This will give you a more muscular because you're pulling it in. You feel it at the deeper muscles in your calf, the back of your knees. Yes. And you keep pushing your chest out and forward. Again, the same things apply that you pull the shoulders back, push the chest out and forward. And you keep going down and down and down as much as you can go. Even if you are here, please stay here. Don't force yourself. Five. Four. Three, two, one, and slowly release the strap. Inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Bring your knees together. Hug your knees. And stay here. Breathe. Breathe nice, long and deep. This is your time. Relax. We'll take ten long and deep breaths here. Ten. Nine. Breathe. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, now, yes, we did some forward folds. We'll do one more forward fold and then we'll go forward. So this forward fold will also include, include a little bit of hip opening. Amni abhi hip opening kiya tha in the butterfly, right? Remember? Oh my god. Yes, you remember it. We did butterfly, a little bit of hip opening. So we inculcate, we'll try to take that and we will put it into our next pose. That is Ardh Padma Paschimottanasani. Ardh Padma, why do we call it Ardh Padma? Because we, we got in half lotus. Padmasan is lotus pose. We got in half lotus. That is why it's called Ardh Padma. If you have issues in the knees and if the knees hurt in this, please don't do it. Yes? So you put it here and try and take the knee down. Now if the foot doesn't reach here, you can stick with the Janu Shirshasan. And for those who can reach the foot here, we'll come here. Yes? Now I'll give you two variations. The first one is that you can simply take your hands up and exhale, fold forward. The second one is, and that is the actual posture, that is how you do it. You take your right hand up, you take it back and you catch hold of the left foot. See? Let me show it from, to you from this side so that you can follow it correctly. 
So you take your right foot, place it closer to the hip joint of the left hip joint. You take your left right knee down. You take your right hand, say hi Pragati, and you take it back. Say, say Pragati, I've got hold of it. Now if you are not able to hold, I have other options. So you take a strap, you put it around the foot, you take this hand, and you catch hold of the strap from here. See, easy. Now you inhale, take your left hand up and exhale, go forward. Catch hold of the foot and stretch. Now if you can reach the foot, then you can obviously stretch without the strap. Again, go as much as you can. No zabardasti with yourself. This is your body. No forcing. Yes, you have to live in this body for the whole life. Yeah. Okay. And keep working forward. You stay here for five. Yes. Four. Three, two, and one. Slowly inhale, look up, come up, exhale, release, and we change. So your right leg goes forward, and the left leg comes in closer to the hip joint, and you put the left knee down. See, the first variation again is with both the hands. So you inhale, take your arms up, and exhale, go forward. As much as you can. Okay. And the other variation. The one where you get into a bind. Is that you take your left hand up. Say hi Pragati with your left. Say Pragati I am able to reach the foot. If you are not able to reach the foot. Pragati has options for you. Inhale. Arms up. And exhale forward. Go forward. Push your chest out and down. And keep working forward. If you feel any stress in the lower back. Please don't force yourself. Only lengthen the spine. And only go as much as you can. And stay here. For five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, come up. Exhale, breathe and relax the legs. Move the knees up and down. Relax your legs. Yes. Yes, we relax also, right? Let's sit in butterfly once and relax the thighs a little. Keep breathing. Inhale, arms up and exhale, go forward as much as you can. And after this, we'll get into some back bends. Yes, excited? I am. Go as much as you can. Stay here for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Bring your knees together and hug your knees. Now the back bend that we are going to do is called Setu Bandha Asan. In Setu Bandha Asan, you lie down flat on your back. You must have done it in the gym and this is called as um, glute bridges. Yes, some people call it glute bridges. But in yoga, because we work with the breath and we uh, so we lift the pelvis up. So it's called Setu Bandha Asan as the name suggests. It's a bridge. So you lie down flat on your back. Kamar ki bal so, Facebook people are not able to see my head. Okay, now they are. And you walk your feet as close to your hip as possible. Okay? Now you keep your knees pointing forward. You keep your hands by the side of the body. If you can reach your ankles, you will reach your ankles. If you cannot, you just keep your hands by the side of your body. And from here, keeping your neck neutral and looking up. Please don't look to the side. First watch the posture and then do it. No looking to the sides in Setu Bandhasana. So you can watch, sit and watch and then do it afterwards. From here you will inhale, lift the pelvis up, engage your, engage your clothes and keep lifting up and exhale and slowly come back down. Yes. So I'll show it to you once more but this time with a friend. So sometimes what happens is when we lift the pelvis up, the knees go out. So to avoid that, you take a block or a cushion or anything that you can get your hands on right now and you put it in between the thighs and you keep pressing it and from here you will inhale, lift your pelvis up and hold as much as you can. Yes? So now let's do it together. Come on. Catch hold of your feet. If you cannot, you can place your hands by the side of the body. And if you need a block, please use a block. If you don't, then yes, you can keep it to the side and inhale up and hold. We stay here for five, four, three, Two, one, three. 
So you take the pelvis down, push your lower back to the mat, squeeze your core and push it to the lower back. Inhale, lift your pelvis up, transfer your weight to your shoulders, but make sure that you're not transferring to the neck. And exhale it down. We repeat this five times. Please don't look uh, on, the, on either side. Only keep looking up towards the ceiling. Two. Three. It's very important that you focus and you keep looking up towards the ceiling and keep breathing. Four. Five. And now we'll hold this one, but we'll try to intensify the stretch a little. So I take my hands, I put my elbows as close as possible, shoulder width distance, and I put my hands under the pelvis, under the lower back, and I lift my bridge up. See? You see the height in the bridge? With the hands, and stay here. Five, four, three, two, one. And slowly first release the hands, gently come back down, and down, and down, slowly, and hug joints. Keep breathing. Yes, stay here, we'll stay here for 5-7 counts. Stay here. You can rock from side to side. Yes? Yes, you like this pose? Yes, everyone loves this one after back bends. You can rock from side to side. You can also rock from forward and back, but don't lift the neck up. We are only massaging the lower back a little. So that we take the stress off the lower back. And hug your knees. Stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly release the legs. Turn towards your right and sit up. Yes, you could follow that. Were you able to follow that? Okay, so now we'll be getting into a cooling series. Now people who have cervical issues or you have any injuries in the shoulders or the neck will not attempt the next postures and others can attempt it. If this seems a little difficult to you, you can. Uh, I'll scale it down for you and then you can do it. So this, the first posture is Sarvangasana. We'll be doing Sarvangasana. Those who cannot do Sarvangasana, any issues in the cervical spine or the back or the shoulders, you do it with the wall and that is called Vipreet Karni. So I'll show Vipreet Karni first. So much stuff. I put my hip to the wall and I take my legs up and I stay here. This is Vipreet Karni. Gives you the benefits of Sarvangasana. It's not the strength but the, all the emotional benefits and all, all the relaxation and cooling down benefits. And now those who can do Sarvangasana, if you have no issues in the cervical spine and if you have a really good uh, cervical spine and shoulder strength, then we'll go to Sarvangasana. Please be very careful while doing it. Do not force yourself. No overdoing it. Yes? Okay. So you lie down flat on your back. And slowly we'll get into Sarvangasana. Let me just adjust the mic so that it doesn't come under me and then you don't even listen to me. You don't hear me only. So I take, I bend the knees, I take the pelvis slightly up. See, I'm engaging the core. I'm using the compression strength of the core to lift the pelvis up and then I'm taking the legs up as much as I can. I use my hands to scoop my back and I keep lifting the pelvis up and up and up. And I stay here, legs together, engage legs, point your toes up, stay here. Don't move your neck to the sides. Now, if this is inaccessible, always you can come here. You can stay here. This is also uh, fine with me. You can come here. This is also fine with me. As much as you can do. This is also fine with me. So, where you can come, that all works with me. Stay with your uh, variation and hold for five breaths. Five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly and gently put your pelvis down. We're not doing Hal Asan because... We take some time to learn that one as well. And take your legs down. Now we'll get into Matsyasan. So I will get into Padmasan for people who can get in Padmasan. And those who cannot get in Padmasan can just cross their legs and get into Matsyasan. So I show Padmasan so that people who can get in Padmasan can try it with Padmasan. Yes, you see this is Padmasan. Okay? And I'm putting my elbows down on the floor. I lift my chest up and I put the crown of my head down. 
I'm putting no weight on the neck. All the weight is borne by my chest and my spine. This is very important to do after Sarvangasana. This gives a counter stretch to your neck. Also works really nicely for your thyroid gland, pituitary gland. Five. Three. One. And slowly lift your chest up and come back down. And relax. And this is time for what you all have been waiting for. This is your Shavasan time. So lie down, flat on your back, palms facing up towards the sky, eyes closed, and breathe in and breathe out. Yes, this is your Shavasan time, so you can relax. Lie down, palms facing up towards the sky, eyes closed, toes turned out and relax, breathe in and breathe out. Let your breath travel to all the parts of your body, especially focusing on the parts where you feel any pain, any strain, any stress or any sort of discomfort. We'll spend a little more time on these parts. We'll try and relax them. We'll try to send the healing energy of our pran. Our pran is the breath, our pran energy. We'll send that healing energy to the parts that need this healing energy. And we'll slowly and gently try to relax the whole body. Stay in Shavasan. Keep breathing nice, long and deep. Focus completely on your breath. Keep breathing. If your mind runs away, you slowly get it back to your breath. It will again run away. You slowly get it back to your breath. No forcing. No uh, taking the thoughts out, out and away from the mind. You just slowly breathe there. And if the mind goes away, you gently bring it back. Keep breathing nice, long and deep. Keep focusing on your breath really, really nicely. We we'll stay here in some silence, focusing on our breath. Silence not just of our words, but silence of our mind, thoughts and actions. Whatever thoughts come into your mind, you slowly look at those thoughts and let them pass without spending too much of time on a single thought. Silence of words and silence of actions. Try to relax the whole body and keep the whole body still. The only movement that's happening is your breath. Inhale nice, long and deep. Keep breathing nice, long and deep. As long as you can go with your breath, without forcing it again, everything has to be super simple and natural, nothing forced. Keep breathing nice, long and deep. And keeping your eyes closed, bring your attention to your breath. And start by moving your toes slightly. Knees slightly up and down. Move your fingers gently. Move your elbows, shoulders, neck side to side. Keeping your eyes closed, bend your knees, turn towards your right. Apni dain or kalvat lenge. You stay there at the right side and breathe here. Breathe nice, long and deep. Relax the whole body. And slowly and gently sit up. Sit in a comfortable sitting position, in a comfortable cross-legged position. It can be 
Sukhasan, Padmasan, Siddhasan, Ard Padmasan, Ard Siddhasan, whichever you would like to sit. Keeping your spine nice and long and straight, bring your hands to your heart center. And we'll chant the Shanti part together. Breathe in. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschit Dukhabhag Bhave Om Shanti 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 Take a moment, let these words resonate within you as the mantra says, the Shanti part says that may no one in this world be diseased or sad, may everyone be disease free and happy and peaceful. Gently rub your palms together, place over your eyes, slightly massage your face and slowly take your palms all over your body, especially focusing on the parts where you feel any pain or strain. Gently bring your hands to your Anahat Chakra or your Heart Chakra or when you do it, open your eyes. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining in, guys. And I'll open the comment section if you have any questions. I would love to take any questions that you might have. I'm not sure how to open the comment section for the... Okay. So if you have any questions, I would love to take any questions that you might have. And if you don't have any questions, then we can obviously... End the session. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm so happy that you all enjoyed the session. I'll take a leave from here. Keep practicing. Keep enjoying yoga. Yoga is an art that you can always, always practice. And this is a lot more than just asanas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll take a leave. Have a great, great night ahead. Bye-bye.